This is chapter 6, lesson 1 and 2. Uh, so right now we want to think about uh, discrete and continuous random variables. So a uh, random variable. A uh, question I want you to think about is what is it and how are discrete random variables different from continuous? That's the focus of ch chapter 6, lesson 1. So random variable is uh, takes numerical values that describe an outcome or a result of some chance process, whether it's flipping a coin, uh, something like that. The probability distribution of a random variable will let us know all the possible values and their probabilities, how likely they are to appear. Um, so a random variable, remember it's an outcome of a chance process. Discrete means a fixed set of values. So if we're talking about a variable like number of heads, number of tails, we can't have one and a half heads, two and a half tails. So it's discrete, there's a fixed set of values. Counting um, how many shots you make. Continuous takes on all values in an interval, like measuring lengths or weights, that sort of thing. So probability distributions um, are just distributions like we looked at before. On the x-axis, we will have the possible values of the chance process, like heads or tails, or like number of shots made, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10 free throw shots taken. And on the y-axis, you have the probability or how likely the outcome is. Remember, any probability model, all the probabilities have to add up to 1, since 100% defines all of the activities. Um, sh uh, we describe them with shape, center, um, and spread. And expected value is like the mean. Uh, what we expect to get, it's the average value of uh, the chance process if we're to be repeated infinitely many times. So it ends up being like uh, the mean. So we usually use the mean or the expected value of the variable in order to figure that out. And we'll show um, how we calculate that coming up using the probability of each outcome to, to weight the average. So uh, if we use a density curve to describe a, nor a normal, or, sorry, a probability distribution, including the normal distribution, um, the area under the curve between the intervals will describe the probability. So if we're looking for um, the probability of x is greater than or equal to 1 uh, for flipping a coin three times, we're looking at the probability uh, of getting heads once, twice, or three times. So it would be the whole interval, uh, including 1, going to the right under that probability curve, which would uh, represent 7 eighths of the area under the total curve, which means 1 eighth of the area would be to the left, 7 eighths to the right. So um, it's important to keep in mind. Um, a discrete random variable takes a fixed set of possible values, and the set of possible values can be infinite. So if x is a number of rolls of fair die needed to get 6, there's no upper limit. So, so we could keep rolling in that case until we get a 6. And uh, we likely, in the long run, get one one-sixth of the time on a six-sided die, but who knows with probability we could just keep rolling and rolling and rolling and who knows how long it would take. So, so right now think about uh, two number lines, shoe sizes from 5 through 15 and then one indicating the length of subject's feet from 5 to five inches to 15 inches. Which one of those is discrete and which one of those is continuous? Pause right now and try to answer. So again, shoe sizes 5 through 15 and lengths of subject feet 5, through 15, five inches through 15 inches. Uh, which one of those is discrete, meaning fixed set of values? Which one of those is continuous, meaning it can take on the, a whole interval? Well, the answer is shoe size would be discrete because you could have five, five and a half, six, six and a half. And uh, length would be continuous because you could have 5.34 inches, 14.3256 inches. So it could take on any number in the interval. So here we have what a probability distribution will look like. You'll have values on the top, x1, x2, x3, and so on for however many the values you have depending on the situation or the chance process and the random variable we're measuring. So these are the, the uh, possible outcomes like uh, zero heads, one head, two heads, that sort of thing, and their uh, respective probabilities. So this is the probability of this value. P2 is the probability of X2. P3 is the probability of X3. So each value has a respective probability. Probabilities have to be between zero and one and all of them have to sum to one. Um, we can then graph these. Uh, you could do this on your calculator by creating lists. L1, you'd put in the values. L2, you'd put in the probabilities. And then when you go to make your histogram, you'd put in uh, the L1 for your list. And for your frequency, you'd put in the probabilities. And it would give you a nice little graph. Expected value. It would multiply the probability times the value uh, and then sum all those up for all our values. So P1, X1. Uh, so X1, P1 plus X2, P2 plus X3, P3 for as many values as we have. 
for variance, we would so we want to see how um, how much these vary from the mean. So we subtract each value from the mean, square it, and then multiply it times its probability, and that's the way of weighting each value, since some outcomes may be less likely than others, or more likely than others. So we're seeing how much it varies from the mean. So we subtract each value from the mean, we square it. That way, it doesn't matter if it's greater or smaller than it. It just tells us a distance from the mean. Not uh, negatives and positives won't balance each other out. And then we multiply by the probability to weight it. Remember, the standard deviation would just be the square root of this whole thing here, the square root of the variance. Tell us the average distance from the mean. Now, when you have a continuous random variable, since it can take on all values in an interval, and there are an infinite amount of numbers in between any two. So in between 1 and 1.1, there are an infinite amount of numbers. We can just keep writing numbers and adding zeros or 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So for that reason, we have to always use an interval because the probability of each specific outcome is zero because there's an infinite number. So whenever we have a continuous variable, like remember shoe uh, measure, measuring shoe length, like foot length, then we have to give an interval uh, in order, and define that and the probability of the variable being in that interval. And that'd be the area under the curve in between those two. In this output, we're rolling dice and we're seeing the results rolls. So I can roll two and eventually this should approach our expected value. So I can add more dice, I can add more rolls, and we'll start to see how that changes as we go. We should approach an expected value for our dice. So we could reset, let's say we did just one dice, but let's say we did 50 rolls. We roll the dice, and we're looking for our expected value. Now between one and six, because each has an equal probability, this should approach our expected value of 3.5, which is shown by that green line. Now that you know the law of large numbers, we kind of waver away from this, and then as we get into bigger and bigger numbers, it approaches our actual expected value. So expected value, it's the average of all the roles. So it basically shows us in the long term what our mean would be. Our expected value is the mean in the long term. And you could calculate this using the probability. So 1, 6 times 1 plus 1, 6 times 2 plus 1, 6 times 3 plus 4 plus the same thing times 4, 5, 6, so on. And that would give us, uh, eventually, this should approach our average here. So in 6.2, we're looking at transforming and combining random variables. It should seem somewhat familiar as we've already done this. Um, now we're doing it with probability. So um, I want you to think about how does changing two sets of data, combining two sets of data, change shape, center, and spread of the resulting distribution. So now instead of just multiplying by a number or adding a number, we're combining data sets. So uh, here's some examples of questions that this would address. Uh, is there a difference, significant difference in the mean salaries for men and women in a certain industry? Big hot button issue in the last election. Uh, like equality between men and women's salaries. Do patients take uh, taking a new drug have a su higher survival rate than those taking the currently used drugs? So we would subtract values. We're looking for a difference here and then looking to see what the difference is and how that might change the shape, center, and spread of the resulting distribution. So we've gone over adding and subtracting a constant and how that changes measures of spread uh, for center and location that Adding and subtracting doesn't change measures of spread, just measures of center and location. Multiplying and dividing changes both, neither changes the shape of the distribution. That should be review. Now, mean and standard deviation, we've also gone over that. Uh, you can use this formula to apply it. Um, you add uh, A, you multiply by B. If you multiplied uh, your data set by a number, it'd be B. If you added, it would be A. The mean is affected in the same way. The standard deviation is only affected by multiplying, but not by adding and subtracting. Um, probability distribution of y here would have the same probability distribution of x. Uh, mean of the sum of random variables. So we would add two means together to get our expected value. So for adding two data sets, uh, we take their, their means or their expected values and add them in order to calculate them. Uh, this is what you should keep in mind here. More variables means more variability. Whether we're subtracting or adding, you're always going to add variances. If you have two data sets, add the variances. Even if you're subtracting the two, don't subtract variances. More variables, more variability. So if we combine two data sets, that's two variables instead of one. There's going to be more variability as a result. So here's an example of finding expected value. Um, here we have a number of passengers on a Jeep tour and the probability based on past data 
of how likely it is to have a certain number of passengers. So you multiply the number, that, which is x, would be the number of passengers here, uh, times its probability. You sum those together, so we'd expect about 3 and 3 quarters passengers, or about 4. And keep in mind, this is discrete, because you can only take on whole numbers. Now the variance is calculated down here. Remember, we're subtracting, we're using this mean we got, 3.75. Subtracting each value from that, squaring it, and multiplying it by the, by the uh, probability. We add those up to get 1.1875, and then the standard deviation is always the square root of the variance, so the square root of that number is 1.090. So refer back to this if you get stuck um, on how to calculate those. So um, if independent random variables means the outcome of one doesn't affect the other. Um, we've already discussed this, but they're going to be a big part of the year, so make sure you go over independence with me if you don't um, understand it before the final. Independence meaning the outcome of one thing doesn't affect the outcome of another like our spins of the roulette. So more variables, more uh, variance. So if we add two variables x and y, we add their variances to get the variant, the total variance of our new data set. Um, and that's the main idea there. So more variables, more variance. Whether you're subtracting, if we're subtracting mean salaries, we still add the variances. More variables, more variance. Keep that in mind. Uh, mean of the difference of random variables, um, we would subtract the two means. So if we're, if we're subtracting, like in the salary example, we would subtract and we subtracted men's salaries from women's salaries. We would then subtract the mean of the men's salaries from the mean of the women's salaries to get the mean of our new data set. So uh, and then if we subtract, we know that the variances still add. So when subtracting two data sets, uh, the means subtract, the, the, the variances add. The, remember, more variables, more variance. So key things from this lesson are uh, discrete versus continuous. Discrete fixed set of values, continuous takes on a whole interval. Uh, random variable, it's a variable that represents the outcomes of a chance process like flipping a coin. Um, keep in mind discrete and continuous and that we can use a probability distribution which is like a histogram we can make or a table that has the values that are possible and their probabilities. So if we did it on the histogram, x-axis would be values, y-axis would be probability distributions. So your conceptual questions on the Google form below. Here's your multiple choice. Um, we're trying to determine if there's a discrepancy between mean salaries of men, which we're going to represent as use, mu sub m, and women, mu sub w, in California. To do so, we subtract the women's salaries from the men's. What happens to the expected value, the mean, mu sub d, and the variance, sigma sub d, of our new data set that results? So a would be uh, given here in front of you. Uh, we subtract the two means to find our new mean. Remember, mu sub d represents uh, the difference, the mean of the differences. Sigma sub d represents the variance of the differences. So this is saying that we'd subtract the means, uh, so subtract women's mean minus men's mean, subtract women's variance minus men's variance. Down here we're saying subtract the means, but add the variances to find the variance of our new data set. And in C we're saying add the means to find a new mean and the mean of the differences and subtract the variances. Here we're saying add the means and add the variances in order to find the mean and variance of our data set. E, we have no way of knowing without having the numerical values provided. So keep in mind that in order to do this, we're subtracting the women's salaries from the men's, and we're trying to find the resulting, the mean of the differences and the variance of the differences uh, based on that. So please read over 6.1 and 6.2 in your book. Look at the examples in there. Um, as we go forward, 6.3 gets a, a little tougher with some new ideas, so make sure you have a good handle on this before going forward. Um, and the conceptual question is below.